previously on Painter's Guild. I can see right through the camera to you watching at home. So far, this is pretty easy. Yeah. Is it's, this it's what not we're supposed to be doing? Easy. Not quite, <laughs> but you're getting there. <laughs> well, we're starting well. Welcome to Painters Guild. I'm Will Friedle. Thanks for joining us again. If you were here with us last week, we were here with Colin Knappen, who is teaching us some amazingly intricate detail work. We were working on the, I'd love to say we're working on the entire aggressor space marine, but we weren't. <laughs> we were working on one very, very, very small part of it. And I think today we're going to be working on another very, very, very small part of it, because again, this is all about technique. Keep in mind, if you get frustrated at home, I was getting a little frustrated last season, or last episode, excuse me, because I, you know, I wanna be good right away, and you keep reminding me very nicely, very gently, that you've been doing this for 20 years. It's a 20-year technique, so stick with it. It's all about practice, um, but I think today we're gonna be continuing what we're doing a little bit, but also working on some battle damage, yep, which is yep. gonna be pretty neat, and you were gonna introduce me to some sort of pig. Pigment. pigment. I was kidding, some <laughs> sort of pigment. But we are good to go. So yes, we are here with the guru himself and we are trying to get a little better at these tiny detail techniques. So yep. um, where do we pick up this week? We have now created like our, our base and it has highlight, it has shadow. At this point, now we can create that character I was talking about. Okay. So what happened to this Space Marine just before we have taken this picture of this Space Marine? Did it fall down? Did a piece of shrapnel hit it in the in the face? Was he attacked? Was he attacked by a, an orc? Okay. Or, Mine or, is just dealing with an eating disorder. Or uh, exactly. So I don't know how to paint that damage. Is the problem? We can do something. No. Okay, we'll figure. It. <laughs> it's all about the backstory. Yeah. Uh, so basically, okay, so, so what that will do? So again, it, this is not pretty. It, it's just a basic highlight and shade. It is pretty, you make it pretty. <laughs> That's the thing, Colin, you make it pretty. But it, it's not smooth. Okay. I, and I don't want it to be smooth. Okay. I want it to be kind of, a, kind of a worn look to it. And so basically now we can tie that in with the battle damage, the scrapes, the, the dings and whatnot. Cool. So I'm gonna get my trusty. Oh, you don't goggling. have to. I, I, I'm, so, I'm gonna start at, w without goggles, but I may end up like this. Which so is awesome. uh, one of the colors I'm getting is this uh, sanguine base. Uh, it's basically. I have that. All right. Uh, most paints have an undercoating uh, on it, and uh, this uh, this technique is kind of from uh, you know painting World War II models or okay. figures. There's like a, a reddish kind of hue primer underneath the paint itself. So when you scrape off the paint, you're gonna see that. That's right? cool. So basically we're gonna paint that on and then we're gonna highlight the edges of our scrapes to make the, the, the scrape and the battle damage stick out. Okay, so. I'm, I'm with you. So I take it we're gonna need a fine detail brush? Yep, the All finest right. one you can get. Right here we have the fine hobby brush. Once again from our friends at Privateer Press. Yep. They've given us some amazing paints, brushes, the works here. So yep. all right, we're gonna we're still working with our wet palette. Um, so we're gonna put a little bit uh, of that sanguine on there. Alrighty. And this is gonna create that uh, that under primer. Okay. Oh my god. I'm painting my water, which I'm really good at. What's the okay, plan? Okay. So basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make some scrapes. Okay. I'm gonna so come over here and check it out real okay. quick. You know, this guy has been trudging through the battlefield and then all of a sudden a piece of rock comes up and hits him on the shoulder blade like that, right? Okay. Hopefully I can do something along that, because that, uh, that's just the line painting. I think I can do that. But the, the, the thing about battle damage, you don't want to have it perfect. Perfect. Right. Okay. Meaning you don't want to see any patterns in it. it. It should all be like it just happened. Like that. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> that's the last time we'll hear that word. Actually, yeah, this is this is fun. I, and are you I, just I like doing it. one or two kind of? Yeah, you just kind of just do a couple spots on the edging of the miniature, just kind of pitting spots here and there. The secret in this technique is it has to be it has to be random. It has to be like it just happened, and there is no rhyme or reason for it. Right, right, right. See, okay, so this what you were talking about before, do you do that every time you're doing battle damage is you kind of do the story before, like you'll say, and he's on the battlefield, and then a rock flies up and hits him, and then you'll paint the thing. Yeah, yeah. You do that at home. Are you talking to yourself when you do it? Yeah, of course. All right, so he was walking, and a piece of shrapnel came up. <laughs> Three pieces broke off. 
and then it will help you kind of. So I mean, like, is this too much? Because it was kind of bigger pieces of shrapnel. Oh my God. Not, not at all. So that's. So now you can try to pit some really small things. Okay. So we just we're doing one side, right? Now, yep, how, just, how much? How much is too much battle damage? So the point where you think it's too much. Fair. Okay. Fair so answer. Ba so basically, uh, my my concept is I put a few scratches, a few, a few dings. Again, if you go overboard, it, it looks rehearsed. It looks rehearsed. Gotcha. And people kind of look at you and go, oh yeah, that doesn't Oh, mean. you but, did battle damage. Yeah. All right. right. <laughs> so if you do like a, a scrape here or something there, it's all about, you know, the perception when you're actually looking at the miniature, where your eyes go and follow. Yeah. So basically what you're trying to do is you're trying, if you want battle damage, you do it enough where it doesn't impede what you're looking at on the rest of the miniature. Okay, that makes sense. So it's kind of a a balance of what you've already painted, the little bit of damage, and and you you have a balance between that. So And do you try to kind of keep your battle damage to like one side of the mini so it's like one side it's, as opposed to the entire mini is covered in battle damage you usually do like so basically, one side's been wrecked kind yeah. of. Yeah. So if you look at this one, so uh, right here, so I put some battle damage there. Mm -hmm. Put some damage here. Put yeah. some more right in this area right here, and then put some up here. But that keeping it small. But keeping so, it like, small. Grade but, me on that one. Exactly, and that, that you don't want to pin any more than that. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. So it, That's like what the I was big thinking. ones, but you right can here. come in there, and you can do little tiny ones as well. Okay. So like that, I think he got hit right in the barrel of the gun a little bit. And it, what's really cool sometimes, if you going through a highlight point and you kind of want to make that battle damage stick out, yeah, like go over a, a, an extreme highlight. So, so okay, so like you know here where it's highlighted on the front, yeah, put a little nick right there. Put a little nick because then you're like, oh yeah, and you draw your eye to that area. So by putting a little bit of damage, you're yeah. highlighting your awesomeness. Yeah, cool. I like that. The it's next step the after imperfections. That, exactly. That, that exactly. It will make your miniature just pop Again, out. Using the P, using yeah, the P word. Just pop out, create character, and it just it makes your miniature alive. That's cool. You want people to see your miniature. So if you just put like a base coat over that miniature, and you put it on the table, it kind of blends in with everything else. Sure. But if you start putting highlights and you kind of upping it and popping it, popping it, uh, that miniature on the table all of a sudden pops out. That's great. So, so I get. I don't. I'm not sure. I want to do too much more of my battle no, damage. You don't have to. So that. from that point forward, now we can go back to our our colors that we used last week. Okay. And uh, our blues and whatnot, um, which are still wet because they're on the palette. Yep, exactly. And so you're what you're trying to do is you want to get into your lighter shade, okay. like a lighter blue, real light with a lot of white in it. This is a this is the little hard part, but once you get it. This is the hard part? Yeah, this is the hard part. What about part? all of last week? <laughs> I was so, happy with the battle damage. I could just put lines on it and go, hey, I kind of know what I'm doing, battle yep. damage. So at this point, you take that light color and you go underneath your battle damage and you just put a white line. And I, I, and I think, I believe that this technique is, I think Brian went over it. He might have, but I tend not to listen to him. A lot of what <laughs> Brian says just blends. I'm just so watch basically, you do this, okay. Right. See this scrape right here? Yeah. So now I'm just going to put a lighter color underneath it. Okay. So it pops out. And you just kind of, you know, go on the underside of the, the scratch. It doesn't have to be all the way around. You just do little segments. My paintbrush is uh, yeah. <laughs> starting to uh, flake a bit there. I'm starting to get the flyaways. So I, I, I have to make a confession. Okay. And I've been really good. Uh, I'm a I'm a brush licker. You are okay. Yeah, You've and... been holding it in. I was wondering why all of a sudden your leg was starting to shake. <laughs> and... A brush licker and or paint eater or yeah, just okay. well, brush licker. There's different phrases for it. Okay, so uh, you eat your paint, don't you? Well, the reason why I brush lick, <laughs> which I'm not, I'm trying very hard good not here, to do, is I'm trying to get on the the trying to get a good point on my paintbrush. Right, but can't you do that just by pulling? You twisting? can. Without having to ingest the paint. True, true. <laughs> so I might die an early death, but no. But come on. <laughs> yeah, everybody goes. Nah, what? Do you, why? Why don't don't do that? So everybody, there's. It seems to be kind of industry standard from a lot of the master painters that we have here. I guess one of the things 
I'm not saying this is a pro tip. I wouldn't say eat paint, <laughs> but licking your brushes seems to help, apparently. Yeah, yeah, again, you're trying to get that point on that brush, and, and licking See, your I'm, brush is I'm the easiest way to I'm getting the point on the it. brush, but now I can't, get, and can't seem to get the paint on the point. Just, just get some water on there and do a thin layer. My eyes were blurring. One second. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. But I, I think this stage in your in the painting, I think, is the funnest because you're able to add character. I'm not sure that's the word I'd use if I was honest, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> what word would you use? You know what it is? It's the equivalent of really wanting to learn how to play the guitar and getting okay with three chords and <laughs> Clapton coming in and going, just play like this. And it's like, come on, and I can't do it. Yeah. So it's frustrating. And, so and, it's, you, and it is a frustration. A it lot, is, And it a is. lot of painters out there get frustrated and they kind of, uh, let's just do a dry brush and yeah. we're done with it. Right. Because, so, but, I mean, but, is it like, the, am, I, am, I, am I doing this right? Yep, exactly. Sweet. Luckily, I have a relatively steady hand. And having a city land is very important when yeah. it comes to I've that. Yeah, I've certainly noticed that. And do you want to hit every little bit of battle damage you've done? Not necessarily. Just the ones that you kind of want to have. You really want to stick out. All right. You know what? I think this is a perfect time to go to Mr. Brian Merlangi with another pro tip. Brian, teach us something, babe. This time we're gonna do gap welding. Anytime you're doing a plastic miniature, you will have gaps. Believe it or not, plastic glue can actually weld that away. Glue is a plastic melter, and a lot of people don't know that. So all you do is you take your gap, apply a little bit of the plastic glue, cover the area completely. If it runs off, don't worry about it. Now once that dries and you prime over it, it will actually look like it's been welded. You got that, Will? Thank you, Brian. Riveting as ever, sir. So. Where do we go next? So now that your miniature has been battle damaged, so what else is on a battlefield? It, dirt, grime, dirt, grime, yeah. and you know, explosion, mud, mud yeah. and it's all flying up. Debris everywhere, and, sure. Uh, exactly. So detritus. Exactly. Nice. Uh, and so at that point, uh, you, your your miniature is going to be a little dusty. It's going to be dirty. It's going okay. to have like it's not going to be grit like and grime. Exactly. And in, in the miniature world or, or model making world, you have now uh, dry pigment to do that with. So okay, this, dry is what you, this is what you talked about with introducing the pigment. Yeah, so yeah. here's a whole new thing we have yet to learn on Painter's So Guild, I have so. A, a, a couple colors here. I have uh, some uh, earth colors, I have some rust colors. And is this powder? It's powder. So Sweet. basically it's, it's this paint right here this is what it is. The granular before, form of the, the paint. Exactly. Okay, so now do we use the same brush for this stuff or no? Definitely not. You don't want to use your good brushes with okay. the drag pigment. So you need to get a, a cheap brush. So luckily here at Painters Guild, we're prepared for every eventuality. Awesome. So we actually have racks of cheaper paint brushes here yep. than the good stuff that uh, that our friends over here. So yeah, from Private just Presto. Get Private Press. So what do we uh, what do we just grab here? Just you any pick one, one for me? Just yeah, there you go. All right. All works. Alrighty. As long as it's a cheap brush, not your, your, your painting brush. Okay, good. that's a good thing to know. Because it's gonna ruin your brush real quick. It is, it's gonna ruin it. You're gonna use this stuff, throw the yep. brush away. Yep. Good to know. So what I like to do with uh, Jeez, the pigments. Look at, that. look at that. Yeah, geez, look at that. Just, just looks like bits of earth. Yeah, you just uh, take a dab of it. Okay. And you just kind of. No water, you don't wet the brush? No water. Okay. Uh, get a little bit on there. Okay. Kind of brush a little bit off. This is always messy. This is really messy too. And then you just kind of dab it on there. Oh, it is messy. It's like cocoa powder. Yep. You're dabbing? Just dabbing on, on, on the miniature. Do you blow any of it off? You, you can. It just, this is just kind of, you know, free flow. Uh, I don't recommend pinning a lot on there. <laughs> right. And then you just kind of brush it off a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of neat. Cause it is, it's dirty and. Yep. Grimy and. So now that, you, now that you look at it, so what you did before kind of all blends it in together. It does. The, the, the battle damage is kind of popping out. Now, I know it's a completely different process. I know it's a completely different technique. I know it's a completely different product. Mm -hmm. But it kind of has the effect of a dry brush in a little way. Yeah, it, yeah. Where it's you're kind of, I don't know, coating the entire project. Not yeah. coating, but you're, you're adding character to the entire project by kind exactly. of a light covering of something. Exactly. Um, so are you doing hitting every color or? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, depending on, uh, just variance and just the color. 
Because in, in real life, if you look at any, any color in, in nature, it's not just one color. No. It's, it's a variation of different colors. Yeah. So, you know, when you pit on pigment, you just, you know, have different colors. Sometimes I even pit like a, a, a green on there or a, a blue. I kind of like, I turned the gun red by accident. That's but fine. I kind of like how it did it. Yeah. So there, there are that some- That kind of looks rusty and nasty mm -hmm. and- Th That is another technique to use. It, you can actually paint your miniature with pigments if you want to. Have you ever done that? Uh, I, I haven't personally, but I've seen people do it. Does like, it last as well as paint? So basically after this point, you can put a fixer on there. It's got a pigment fixer. If you don't, eventually this will all rub off. Uh, See, I know that's probably too much for most people, but I like that yeah. look. It looks like he was running and fell. Exactly. Boom, whole thing, gun in the side. So I'm kind of digging that look. I like the pigments, but again, it's because it's not detail work. I could just yeah. throw it on and go, this look is, at the shiny this colors. A, this is fun. It kind of just blends everything together and it kind of makes a whole picture uh, and, you know, Nice. I kind of exactly. That. It's probably not how it should have been, but that's okay. But that's but it. I, I like it. Yeah. So basically, for me, this is the the last step of the miniature. You you pit on your pigment. You pit on your final coat of, yeah. of matte finish, and then you're done. Okay. Okay. But we don't. I don't want to be done yet. Uh, I know. So <laughs> I, I have to. So one of the one. things I wanted to like to do is maybe do um, some metal. Okay. So Sweet. And basically, uh, metal, uh, a lot of people have a hard time with metal. What we can do now is around the caprice here, uh, we can do, we're going to do a gold. Okay. And then we're going to uh, kind of make the edges pop out. And then we're going to shade it a little bit. Okay. Uh, to bring out the color of the gold. Oh, so, you, now am I going to be able to do this on here with all the stuff that yep, I've done? Okay, that's right. You go first because I want to watch what you're going to do. I take it we're going back to good brush? Yep. Okay, we are back to good brush. This is how you should look after a day of painting. <laughs> how it should be. So you're pulling what color? Relic gold. This is the relic gold. gold. Yep. And are we going detail brush? Uh, medium, doesn't matter. Let's try this one because the other one was starting to fray a bit. So I'm adding, uh, because I worked with P uh, P3 paints before, I'm just adding uh, so our medium, our flow aid. Oh, okay, um, just a drop, right? Yep. Just a dab will do you. Just a dab. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're, we're going to paint this all the way around and all the way up there. All right, show me, show me on yours. I want to, I want this time. I want to watch because I didn't watch last time, and I ended up doing that big black thing. Okay. And I kind of so we, uh, the all, this thing. is just a base coat, and it just pitting this gold color on. Oh, okay. So we're painting that entire thing. Yep. All right. Well, let me start there because I think I can do that. And uh, you know, metallics is a, is it's a hard medium to to work with. Why is it unforgiving? Or? It, it is in a, in, a, in a way. Um, it depends on what kind of paint you have. Uh, if the, if it's they have enough. Uh, so th to make the metallic paint, they put a little flex. Flex of the metal in there, right? Metal yeah, in yeah, there, yeah, yeah. And so, so the finer the fleck, the better it looks. Okay. The larger the fleck, which is cheaper to manufacture. Makes sense. It doesn't look as well. It's not as good. Yeah. And are we just doing that section? So yeah, just go all the way around. You'll you, that raised part all the way around. Uh, all the way so around the bottom yep. here, and then all the way. Yep. All right, copy that. Uh, one of the other things a lot of people do nowadays is it's called non-metallic painting. Okay. On, uh, or uh, basically, you paint the metal onto your miniature in like regular paint. Without, why not without just, metallic. Why not just paint it with the metallic though? Because it looks better. It does. Oh, it does look better it, the other it way. It totally looks better. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I was wondering if they were just like making a step. Some people get so good that it's like, <laughs> I'm just gonna make it harder for myself. I'm gonna make black, but I have to only use white. Like, wait, why, why not just paint with black? So yeah, it's you never know. All right, so I'm going all the way around. Am yep. I, am I, how far around am I going? And then this this back part right okay, here. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they really. Don't make it easy, do they? No, and it's really hard sometimes to get coverage with the, the actual metal itself, especially if you have a darker color like this blue underneath. Yeah, so and- I hit my metals. All right, let's go to the next step. Which is? Uh, we're gonna do highlight. So basically- Of what we just did or- Of what we just did. Okay. So basically we're gonna get a lighter shade of gold. Uh, this is uh, solid gold. And we're just gonna work up. I have a ton of solid gold. 
jokes, but I will say them <laughs> because we are on an important step, important step. So basically, uh, it's the same thing as the blue. We're just going to edge highlight up on the top there, and we're just bringing that color out a little bit more. Copy that. And again, to go back to the, the phrase pop, you're just making the, the metal pop. Now, do you want to bring it over the ridge a little bit, or is it just on the top? Just over, you can do the ridge because we're going to do another highlight on top of that. We're doing yet another highlight. Yep. Got it. I have yet to spend this much time on one section of a mini. So what I'm trying to do, because I know that this is a, cur a curved piece right here. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm pitting my, I'm not necessarily pitting my highlight all over it. I'm just pitting it in the middle. Okay. How's that looking? Uh, looks good. Looking. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. All right. So what's next? Okay. So now we go into our final highlight, and we're going to use cold steel. All right. One last highlight. There we go. Where's my cold steel? There she blows. So one thing to know about uh, when you're doing metallics, and, uh -huh. and this is a good tip uh, for future, if you're going to use uh, metallics, I would have an extra cup. It's okay here, but it, have an extra cup and rinse your brush in that cup. So basically, every time we rinse uh, our metal, it gets in there. So every time... So a separate cup for that is a second pro tip. Yep. A, pro, a pro tip times two. If you're going <laughs> to be painting with metallics, have a separate cup of, metal, uh, of, of water yep. just for the metallic paints. So you keep them separate so yep. the metal flakes... So it, do, it doesn't get into your other uh, paint. Important tip. Yep. Important tip. Yep. Good to know. But if you don't, you know, sometimes you're... You're, you're going to get to your final you, stage and go, yeah. oh, I can't believe I just did you, that. You know, you're... you're your miniature is all jazzercised and has glitter all over it. Fair <laughs> and you're enough, like, What's exactly. Going on? It's like my, my <laughs> miniature was just at a strip club. Yep. Um, okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, so basically our, we are taking our silver and we're just going to do uh, just a edge. Oh, again, on the same, doing the same thing? Yep. All right. But just on the edge. We're not even going down into the miniature itself. What you're trying to do is you're trying to emulate the, the, the shine. I mean, is it that light? All you have to do. And is that, that, is that it? Is yep. that all we're hitting? Is that one spot? It's just that one, uh, just, you know, you're trying to get the, all the edges Oh, we them. are. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. So we're, because I think it's probably pretty dry at the bottom now. Yep. Just go along the edge. So again, you're, you're making the metallic spot. You can get those little rivets as well. And now are you just giving them a little pop on each one? Like a little yep. dab of paint on each one? Yep. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. All right. So our last thing that we're going to do for yeah. this metal. Please tell so me. So now we're going to go and shade it a little bit, kind of give it a, a warm color to it. Okay. Uh, a good thing to do that is you we use um, the Citadel uh, shade. You can do Ruckland uh, Flesh. Here we go. You want that one? The, the Flesh shade. I've got the Violet. Uh, this will work. You got it? Yep. So basically, we're going to get a little bit of that on there. Just dab it on there. And we're talking a little bit, right? Yep. We're not slathering it on. Okay. Copy I, I'm that. not a, I'm not a breather, uh, believer of slathering shade on there. Okay. And then? And just kind of... not a believer in throwing shade. I respect that. Yep. Yep. And just go into like the recess here and just kind of paint in the recess right there. All righty. Where those rivets are and kind of work your way up. Work it down to up? Uh, no, just work your way up into this part of the. Oh, the I see what you're yeah. And what this does, it, it warms your your, uh, oh, your sure gold does. up. Are you hitting the bottom gold as well? Yeah, you just do a quick oh, brush Actually, over no, it. Gonna, that is pretty cool. And we just want it light, right? Yep. So like that. Exactly. Can I look at yours real quick? Yep. Yeah, I guess that's okay if you like that sort of look. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So awesome. yeah, so this is a quick and easy way of doing uh, metallics. So what do you think? Is that a good spot? I think that's a good spot. Wow. Two full episodes on like one quarter of a mini. That's impressive. Let's do this. Check this out. And then look at that. Unbelievable. But that's what it takes. When you get up to these higher levels and to these kind of almost full-on pro techniques. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience, and uh, I love that we did two whole episodes on the tiniest part of a tiny little mini. That is incredible. Well, we have come to the end. Thank you so much. Can we, can we please thank Cullen Knappen, who's helped us the entire time. 
the, the man, the myth, the legend, the guru. Another amazing teacher. We're going to have more of them because, you know, if they're going to teach, we're going to learn. And I hope you guys are going to stick with us. So uh, come back and join us again. And remember, every great masterpiece started with a single brushstroke. Thanks, everybody.